I don't know if it's right wing imagination, but it's certainly right wing contortion. And I, I, I spoke about this yesterday um, and, and I wanted to give you an opportunity to get in on this and also expand it. And also, frankly, to just give you an opportunity to talk about Mitch McConnell, which I don't know if it's good for your spiritual life, Cliff, but you certainly get a lot of joy out of it. So let's uh, let, let's get to it. But uh, I do. It actually spiritually <laughs> it makes me feel better. It makes you feel spiritually nourished. OK. All right. Great. Then, then it's succeeding on all levels. But. What we've noticed, and you've pointed this out before, um, and, I, and I think you know McConnell's the sort of prime example of this, but this gets much broader than McConnell, and it's how, how is the ACA playing out in the midterms? How is Obama playing out in the midterms now that it's no longer a philosophical abstraction, now that it's no longer a bad website? And, right. you know, we're seeing the results and, you know, sure, there's some there's some, you know, it's it's again, we, we can say this a gazillion times. It's not a perfect law, but on balance, particularly with a place like Kentucky that's benefiting from the Medicaid expansion, this law is saving lives if governors will allow it to save lives and they're not doing sociopathic, uh, you know, denial of coverage. So particularly in Kentucky, this becomes a fascinating question. How do you square that your main activity in the Senate? Uh, or at least one of your prime activities, has been an attempt to kill this bill. Now this bill is saving lives in your state. So is there an intellectual and policy reassessment about this bill? Or do you go to the people and say, hey, look, I don't care. I'm going to kill it. No, Mitch McConnell did something that is very him. He went and said, well, of course I support the expansion and the exchange in Kentucky, and I still want to kill Obamacare. And right. in my it's imagined world, there are completely different things. So, but, but, but I want you to talk about that, and I want you to get – because it's also interesting the way you know, we were seeing this with Kay Hagan in, in, in North Carolina. She yeah. – you know, even if they're not saying I am a Obamacare supporter, even if the actual – even if the identity of the bill as a whole is still questionable, they're starting to grab pieces and say, look, of course I support enhanced consumer protection. Of course, I support increased Medicaid access. Of course, I support people being able to buy affordable packages. What do you support? Is is the is the frame changing on this issue, and how could it be further exploited? Could Democrats get even more aggressive on this? Well, it definitely could, and we've talked about this before. Yeah. Uh, I mean, McConnell, if Allison Grimes is willing to take this to him, it looks like her rhetoric is getting a lot better on this. She was avoiding it before, and yeah. I would give the same advice to Michelle Nunn in Georgia and others who have sort of just tried to avoid this issue. Don't avoid this issue. Um, it's easier in Kentucky, clearly, because the governor, Steve Beshear, did what was meant, what his plan was meant, you know, meant to do before the Supreme Court came out again with another, an, another stupid decision. What a shock. And said the states didn't have to accept Medicaid funding. And so just, just to be jerks, just to undermine the law, Absolutely. just to be the evil people they are, all these Republican governors refused to expand Medicaid, even though it was covered by the federal government, so that they could de- de- deprive people of health care. Um, in Kentucky, the governor, Steve Beshear, a Democrat, decided to do just the opposite. He decided to expand you know, uh, their system by as much as he could to set up an, not only expand Medicaid, set up an exchange called Connect in Kentucky. And it's been unbelievably effective to the point where over 400,000 people have now gotten health insurance for this. And this has created the biggest headache for, for the evil, manipulative Mitch McConnell, who couldn't give a damn about anybody else but his own career, because he's spent all of his time acting like, you know, that he's done what Republicans do. He's negatively branded Obamacare, and he's created that same division that we talked about on global warming and gun control and other things. Um, that, that same division, either for Obamacare or you're against it. It's this evil socialist thing. Most people don't even know what Obamacare means. When you ask them about the individual parts of it, they're for almost all of them and by wide margins. Um, so now he's got to go to these people uh, and tell them that he's going to kick 400,000 people off their health care. So now he's in an intellectually indefensible position that he's going to get reamed on because basically he just keeps saying, well, we're going to still rip out Obamacare, but well, of course we'll keep Connect. Connect is Obamacare. Yeah, Connect is Obamacare. I mean, so, so, but, but, but this raises a really important question, and this is an interesting test case to see how it plays out. I think obviously the, the stakes are entirely different because, again, this isn't an abstraction. Now you have health care before you didn't have health care. So that's a very clear question. Are you going to take away my health care or not? But then at the same time, you know, this plays into, uh, you know, Matt did a story a couple weeks ago, uh, you know, going and asking lower income voters in Kentucky, um, you know, what do you think about the social safety net? And they they recognized I need it. But then who's who's killing it? Obama. Right. 
who, you know, or, or Republicans aren't going to kill it. You know, just these really completely erroneous beliefs around it. So in some ways, it's a test case not only of how much mendacity and dishonesty this guy can get away with, but also whether, you know, even beyond health care, how do we start to have an accurate conversation about social safety net? I mean, that, that really is what it seems like the stakes are. Well, no, it, they, yeah. it is, because this is what they've always done. What they do is they brand the term negatively. Right. So it's liberal or gun control or Obamacare or welfare or, you know, keep, keep going on and on from there, right? And, and they brand the term negatively. So, but, so people that are sort of more lower information voters or don't, don't know as much, when they hear that term, they react negatively to it, not knowing what it does. It's Allison Grimes' job, frankly and others in these races to tell people, particularly those who, who can point to an effective uh, and successful effort in their state, to say, this is what it does. Say, say, hey, you know what? This is what Mitch McConnell wants to take. A, he, he loves yelling about Obamacare. Here's what he, you know, he, he, he attacks Obamacare. He says this, he says that. Let me translate for you what he's saying. He will take this away from you. Right. This is, there's federal funding that is paying for your health care. If you have health care through Connect, and, and, and Mitch McConnell is successful in what he intends to do, you will lose it. She needs to be very clear about that and very open about that and very forward about that. And there may not be as many examples because you've got Nathan Deal, for example, in Georgia, who's a right-wing imbecile who's, who's blocked Medicaid expansion and who um, obviously didn't, I, I'm pretty sure if I'm right, didn't try to do an exchange. I'm sure he didn't actually, so that you're going through the federal exchange. But, but clearly you can find out the number of people in Georgia. There must be numbers uh, who, you know, this guy, you may know him too. I'm friendly with Charles Gaba has been doing this fantastic yeah. series on signups. Uh, of Obamacare, you know, go to him, go to others. You can probably find out how many people have gotten signed up to health care in Georgia or North Carolina or Louisiana or Alaska or really any other state where there's a Democratic incumbent where Republicans are trying to run against this. And the way to always respond to this, it's always been the way, but Democrats have been too scared. Every time they attack Obamacare say, is to say to people, here's what my opponent is really saying. All of you who were able to get health care now because you couldn't and you couldn't because you had pre-existing conditions, he's going to take or she's going to take away your health care. All of you who have children who are now able to be on your health care up to the age of 26, he or she is going to take away your health care. All of you who didn't have to worry about your health care company suddenly when you have a sickness taking it away from you. He or she's going to take away your health care. All of you who had to worry because you've got some, some sort of an illness that there was a yearly cap on what could be spent and the rest would have to come out of your pocket or a lifetime cap so that you're paying forever. That he or she's going to make you pay those prices. This is what you need to understand. So don't fall for his playing around with words. Don't fall for the demon, demonizing of Obamacare or really anything else. Understand in your daily life how this is going to make a difference if Mitch McConnell has his way. Well, it's just that simple. It's that simple. I mean, I, I, you could set up a, a, a website. The DNC should set up a death toll website. This, you know, every GOP governor that's not taking Medicaid funding this is how many lives it's uh, that are that are being lost as a result of it, or at least this That's is how right. much care. I mean, set it up, have a clock, have a really elegant visual, and say this is the cost of ideology over reality, and this is the cost of 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 cynical politics over human lives. It's so simple. I mean, it's right there. I, and I think the other thing that I just also would like to touch on about this that I think is also you know important that that. Obviously, even with the protections and even with the, the changes in all of these and, and the important reforms in terms of things like caps and things like, you know, greater consumer protections, you know, you, you see this in the VA hospital. And obviously that is a real crisis and it's in, it's led to people's lives being lost. It's not an Obama crisis. It's a it's a long term crisis in the VA. But they immediately go to, you know, the, that the, the 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 cynical move and the obvious move is, well, this is what happens when you have, you know, government wait times and government health care and government bureaucracy. I want to see, you know, Democrats need to get on the, you know, bureaucracy is bureaucracy. When you dealt with HMOs and insurance companies and they rejected your claims and they didn't return your calls and they gave you a million onerous forms to fill out, what is that? That's bureaucracy. This isn't That's, magically you, you be more freedom. Right. This, is, this yeah. isn't magical freedom because it's conducted in the free market. And oh, Democrats, well, it's a business, so it must, be, right. it must be completely transparent and successful, you know, like Blackwater. 
Exactly. And exactly. And all these other, I mean, the thing that has always been, the, you know, I mean, there have been a number of, of, of sort of rhetorical devices that re- Democrats have never been willing to use, responses they've never been willing to use. It just drives me freaking nuts. And one of them is allowing this whole, this trope, allowing this garbage to, to go forth that, that government is inefficient, uh, but business is so efficient. Wall Street was damn efficient in 2007, wasn't it? Right. I mean, you know, the, 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 the truth of the matter is, is that uh, as business gets bigger and bigger, and this is what people should point out, it becomes less and less efficient. You know, you may have an argument when it comes to small business, but, but don't, don't come talk to me about big healthcare companies and big oil companies and Wall Street and places like that, these large companies that you're going to tell me that, that are impersonal and are bureaucratic, you're going to tell me that they're efficient? Give me a break. Bureaucracy you know? is bureaucracy, and we want you to have more health care and spend less time on your phone on the phone with your HMO. And in fact, if you're us, we don't want there to be an HMO, but that's another story. It seems like well, such an HMO obvious before, argument. before, that's the death panel. <laughs> They're the ones deciding whether you'll get your, your, your exactly get, get covered or not. That's your actual real life death panel. Right. We just want you covered, and we want you to waste a hell of a lot less time dealing with these private sector bureaucracies, and that's exactly what they are, and that also should be hit every single frickin' day. That's right. But uh, Cliff Schechter, I'm, I appreciate you coming on while, uh, while uh, we pitch it, pinch it for, uh, for Sam, and uh, it's a pleasure as always.